for the dark hours when you dare not close your eyes. No sleep. It's the No Sleep Podcast. No sleep. Featuring stories from Reddit.com's No Sleep Forum. No sleep. Join us as the sleepless hours tick past. Our first tale is entitled, Don't Ever Turn It Off, written by Jimmy C. Broadhead Jr. and read by Alex Beal. A while ago, my family and I moved up to Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a software programmer and I moved up there for work. I thought I was pretty lucky to find a well-paying job for someone that was self-taught and had only three years of actual on-the-job programming experience. My wife and I had only been married for two years and had just received our first child less than a year before the move. A beautiful baby girl. I decided that it would be best for me to move up and find a place to live by myself first and then send for them. I moved into a nice one-bedroom apartment in Riley Towers. I thought it was funny that I had moved from Alabama and was now living on Alabama Street in the middle of downtown Indianapolis. It was a very cozy apartment on the 13th floor in one of the smaller sections of the apartment complex. There were two large towers, and connected to one of them was a much wider complex that wasn't as tall. I lived in there. For the most part, things were very beautiful. But that's not what I remember the most. There were no washer or dryer connections in the apartment, but there was a very large laundromat in the basement of the towers. The basement also was used as extra storage for the residents. When you exited the elevators, you would get an instant chill up your spine, like something wasn't quite right there. I tried to get my laundry done as quickly as possible, but having never lived in a big city or even used public laundry machines, I was nervous to leave my clothes and go back upstairs, so I would sit and wait. The room where the laundry machines were was fairly large, and at the end of the long room was an opening to the storage. There was no door, just a large hole big enough for a set of double doors that just sat there, dark and menacing. I knew when my wife and daughter arrived in a few months that we would most likely just move into one of the larger apartments and we would need one of those storage rooms, so I decided to walk into the dark one day to check them out. It was a large space that had a warehouse feeling to it. The ground was a solid cement base and the storage areas were large metal cages. With the clanking of the machines in the other room, the dim lighting, and all the random possessions, it reminded me of a scene out of Hellraiser. As I was walking through the area, I felt something brush me from behind. I froze and felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I turned around to see a water pipe running up through the middle of the floor. It wasn't uncommon and really wasn't out of place. However, it wasn't close enough for me to have brushed against it. I looked around and didn't see anything else near enough. I walked closer to the pipe and noticed that it was dripping water from a small spigot sticking out. It was a fast drip, the kind that happens when a child doesn't quite turn the water all the way off. I reached for the spigot to turn the water off, only to have a chill come up my spine again, and heard someone with a real deep voice say, Don't turn that off! Frightened, I turned around to see an older man clothed in rags. He looked homeless, which struck me as very odd because you had to go through a kind of security checkpoint to get into the building. Don't ever turn it off. Ever, he said in a stern way. His face was wrinkled up, but I don't remember much else about him. The shock of turning around to the sound of someone that I hadn't seen had given me an adrenaline rush, and after the initial fear had subsided, I was almost laughing as I replied, You almost gave me a heart attack! I bent over, grabbing my heart in a mocking sort of way, but when I looked up, the man wasn't there anymore. I heard him walking towards the elevator and ran to catch him to see what he had meant, but he was on the elevator and gone before I could catch him. Three months later, I moved my wife and daughter up and we lived in a two-bedroom apartment. I told her the story of the old man and how living on the 13th floor had creeped me out. We were now on the 4th floor. She laughed at how silly it all sounded coming from me, somebody not remotely superstitious but still nervous about small, dark places. One evening she went to wash our clothes. I'd given our daughter a bath and put her to bed while my wife was busy doing the laundry. After watching some television, I began to get worried that my wife hadn't returned. I waited around a bit longer, and when I could no longer hold out, I decided to scoop the baby up and put her into the stroller so we could go down to the basement and check on her mother. I will never forget something that I originally passed off as a mistake on my part. 
When I went to my bedroom to get the stroller, I heard the water on in the bathroom. It wasn't a full stream, and it wasn't dripping. It was a very light stream, like the kind you'd use to fill up a water pistol. Before getting the stroller, I turned off the water, figuring that I hadn't turned the knobs all the way off after bathing the baby. I went down into the basement to see nobody in the laundry room. The machines were silent, but sure enough, a few of them contained our clothes. I gazed at the large, empty doorway leading to the storage area. I parked the stroller where I could see it and peeked inside the room. There was no one around, and no sound. Dead silence. Then I noticed the pipe that had scared me previously. I noticed the water was off, and near the puddle was a shoe print. I looked a bit closer and saw that it was a petite, familiar size. Before I could look any further, my daughter began to scream shrilly like somebody had just hit her. I looked to see nobody nearby and rushed over to see what was the matter. Still no one around, but my daughter was reaching into the air and screaming louder than I'd ever heard before. I rushed the stroller back to the elevator and hurried over to the concierge desk and tried to explain what had happened. No video from the security camera showed anyone entering or leaving the building during the time I had been waiting except for the usual tenants coming home late from work. The police were called. I had no family, and I hadn't made any friends yet, so I had nobody to watch my daughter while I went out to look for my wife. The police and the concierge promised that they were going to scour the apartment complex and find her. There were no other ways out that weren't visible on the security cameras, so they felt confident that she was still in the building. Somehow, I managed to return to my apartment with my daughter. My hands shook as I opened my door, not knowing how I would sleep that night without my wife. I closed the door and turned to take the baby back to bed when I heard it again. The sound of the bathwater running ever so gently. And this time, the low, wailing moans of a young woman being tortured. My wife was never found. My daughter had to go and live with my wife's sister. For years, I haven't been able to sleep in a bedroom near a bathroom, because every night around 11 p.m. the water turns on, and the moaning starts. You can try to ignore the sounds, but you can't ignore when the dark, almost unrecognizable figure of your once beautiful wife comes to stand dripping at the foot of your bed. Don't ever turn the water off. Ever. Ever.